Approximately 30% of all boating accidents are caused by alcohol use. The TWRA makes it a top priority to get intoxicated boat operators off the water. Alcohol and boating do not mix. Always choose a designated boat operator. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Tennessee Outdoor Journal, where we'll take you to a recent Becoming an Outdoors Woman workshop at Buffalo Ridge Refuge. We'll do a ride along with TWRA's Boating Officer of the Year and learn how he helps keep our Tennessee waters safe for boaters. We'll go into the night on a gray bat adventure, then hit the woods with a couple of youth squirrel hunters. Good job. This season of Tennessee Outdoor Journal, we open the cover and salute the men and women who have dedicated their careers to wildlife conservation over the past 75 years. We'll share some of our special stories from years gone by, as well as current work being done by your Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. What kind of legacy will we leave when our days upon this earth are gone? Tell me who will carry on this work that we've begun. Care enough to be the keeper of the dream. As usual, we'll share a few tips and tricks to enhance your outdoor experience. Let's turn the page. All right, we're so glad to have you. I'm Donald Hosky, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. beautiful Buffalo Ridge Refuge in Humphreys County today having an Outdoor Woman Field Day. Uh, the agency's been involved with the Becoming an Outdoors Woman program for over 27 years. Uh, it's been a pretty amazing journey and the thousands and thousands of women that we've introduced to the outdoors and today we've got a pretty unique situation. We're offering some stuff we've never been able to do before. Uh, the ladies actually have an opportunity if they sign up for the long distance shooting to shoot a mile and I actually just found out that every lady in the class hit the target at a mile which is pretty incredible. Um, we're very blessed to have that facility here at the refuge. In addition to that, we've got the ATV class. We've got over 10 miles of trails where participants are able to ride their four-wheelers through. This has been such a good experience. I don't know any other state who has a program like this. I've never heard of another program that teaches people how to go in the outdoor world and respect it and be safe. So I think this is such an awesome experience. You get to meet so many interesting people who have been doing this, you know, for 10, 20, 40 years. Somebody has been paddling for 40 years and it was just so neat to hear their experiences. Um, and just like little basics that I would not have known. Um, even with like wearing a life jacket, making sure that, you know, you can't slide your fingers under it. And just like little tips like that that you wouldn't learn if you were just trying it by yourself. I think my biggest motivation in coming to become an outdoors woman is changing my dynamic. I'm a city girl um, and a lot of times I don't go and do things because my family and friends, they don't like the outdoors, they don't like fish, they don't like snakes, they don't like bugs. 
and I'm just like really trying to reverse like what my likes and dislikes are and so I'm really trying just things that are so not what has been my go-to things to do. So today I chose Shotgun and ATV. Totally never done them um, and it was just an amazing fun time and something I really thought that I can't do. I did like almost like an expert so. <laughs> okay shout out to Slate who was an amazing instructor for Shotgun. Uh, he really um, gave me great direction on uh, how to track the gun, some of the terminology, he really broke it down. It, it made it my friend, and then it just made it really easy as far as how to navigate thinking, what to do. Uh, today we're down here in West Tennessee, and this is an absolutely beautiful location. I hope that the bow program has future workshops here too. It's easy to get to and you know, for a one day event, didn't have to get up too early this morning to get here on time. Today I came back because they were offering stand up paddle boarding, which is something that didn't exist 22 years ago the first time I came and, and I wanted to give that a try. So now, now I know how stand up paddle boarding works. Um, I'm not very good at standing up. I think I'll stick with canoeing and kayaking where I can sit down. And this afternoon, I'm gonna get to do the foraging for wild edibles class and uh, go out in the woods here and find out what I can eat or can't eat if I'm ever lost. A little tree that we, we shriveled up. But I want you to smell of this. This is probably one of the best known uh, wild teas. Yeah, smell of that and tell me, tell me what you think it is. That you collect uh, from a good safe source. Put it in your bag with your confectioner sugar. And again, kids love this and it's super, super easy. There's no way we could do these events without our volunteers and our instructors. Uh, they're very passionate about the outdoors and it still blows me away is many people that come out and volunteer and dedicate their weekend just so they can pass along their passions and their knowledge to these people. On a compound bow, it's mo mostly compound bow shooters are made to draw back when you hold them to break down. The Genesis bow is designed to fit anybody. It's really neat to be able to introduce people to outdoors, and that's the beauty of the Becoming an Outdoors Woman program. If you sign up for these classes, you're actually gonna be outside doing it. I think I'm definitely going to apply for more Becoming Outdoors Woman uh, activities. I'm really, really trying to engage my community of friends, show them my pictures, show them what I did, and just encourage them that, you know, this is just another twisted dynamic of what we can do outside of our city. Um, I think I'm really learning some skills that I think are really necessary. Camping, um, loading a boat into the water, like, fishing, shooting, like these are just normal human history type skills that I think we should all, if we don't know how, at least try it, you know. Learn more about the Becoming an Outdoors Woman program in Tennessee by visiting tnwildlife.org. Join our email list for notifications about upcoming events. To purchase a license to hunt or fish in Tennessee, visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com. Hey, when the grandkids come to visit, do they plant themselves in front of the TV all day? That's no way to spend the summer. One of the best ways is to get them outdoors and take them fishing on one of Tennessee's beautiful lakes or rivers. There you go! 
It'll open up a whole new world of conversation and wonder and make memories to last a lifetime. To learn more about purchasing your fishing license, visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com. That's GoOutdoorsTennessee.com. over 50% of the county, so we spend a lot of time on the water. I mean, it's our responsibility to keep our waterways safe for everybody to enjoy and have fun. Just, just something I've always enjoyed doing. I was raised as a kid on this lake, uh, walleye fishing as a kid with my grandparents. So it's, it's just something that I, I take very seriously and personal and, and enjoy being out here, so. Yep, well done. All right, well, let's get back to it. It's, Thank good, you, it's good to be checked once yes, in a while. Well, I hope you, you know, you go down, they'll tell me, they'll holler, said, you never did get checked. And I said, well, I've been checked three or four times down here, but I like to say, you better tell them. Uh, uh, mainly the ultimate goal is to keep our waterways safe. I mean, we want everybody to come out here and have a, have a good time, um, enjoy our natural resources we have in the state. But uh, our ultimate goal is everybody go home at the end of the day safely we don't have any accidents uh, we're out here to make sure that everyone is abiding by state laws state regulations u.s coast guard regulations uh, with safety equipment um, that they're obeying the the rules of the water um, you know busy weekend out here consists of stops for you know fishermen we have paddle craft on this lake uh, registered vessels Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, oh. So is this the first time you've been on this lake then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's the first, the first time because we, we don't have bass. Right. We haven't got a clue out of fish for them. Right. Yeah. Uh, all I can recommend is early that morning. There's a couple of bass there. Yep. Throw up. Under that little boat shell. Put you a drop shot and try it. I mean, that's about all you can do. We're out here. Every hour seems like uh, morning midday afternoon on up into the a.m. of the next morning so I don't think one day on this lake's ever the same always something's always different so. um, we're looking for fishing licenses safety equipment um, make sure there's no reckless operation of vessels and most importantly uh, make sure nobody's operating their vessels while under the influence of alcohol and or drugs so I've worked um, multiple accidents that included injury beyond first aid that required uh, life flight care to the hospital. Um, the typical accidents we'll have out here are property damage accidents that exceed $2,000, um, boats running into each other. We're lucky not to have too many fatals, too many uh, multiple vessel collisions on this waterway. Uh, All right, well y'all enjoy your day. It's gonna be a pretty one, so. Yes, sir. Right About 80 degrees right now. In the water? 80? Oh, that's not too bad. 79 and some change right now, so it'll get hotter as the day goes. Well, Egg Red is cool. It's about 52. <laughs> Freezing. We've got a lot of really good officers that, that keep our waterways safe and try to stop that before it, it happens. Um, we can't stop every one of them, obviously, but uh, we try to get out here and make sure people are aware of how they need to, need to be operating on the waterways in a safe manner and have all that safety equipment with them. Bit of everything tonight so uh, there's lots of research going on in the state and we're uh, teaming up with lots of different partners to kind of knock out a lot of projects at the same time uh, this is a really really significant cave so the bats that are our target species tonight for our project are gray bats they're an endangered species Right now, um, the gray bats are coming out of hibernation. Um, 
Yes, a lot of them are migrating and some of them have probably settled down into this cave and are using it as a maternity colony. You know, bats are challenging to study. Uh, they're small, they fly at night, they're nocturnal, and they really don't like humans in their roosts. And if we were to go into this cave and be doing a lot of research and work, it would disturb them and they would leave this roost and go somewhere else. So we use more passive method. And tonight we're using a harp trap, and it's a really simple design of really two columns of fishing line, just monofilament fishing line. And we set it off to the side so it's not in the main flyway of these bats as they're coming out. And we just catch some of the bats, you know, a low number of the of the overall, you know, gross emergence of the bats tonight coming out of the entrance. And it's enough for us to do a little bit of research on and to study without having a large impact. And the, the colony as a whole won't even know we were here. So this one actually has a little bit of the alopecia. So the skin looks really scaly and flaky. We have uh, Ash Cable, a uh, PhD student at the University of Tennessee who's doing some uh, swabbing. So I will take samples from this bat. We're looking at the presence of alopecia, which is um, fur loss on bats. And um, we're trying to investigate over the summer um, any patterns of seasonality or potential causes of alopecia. So we're looking for some of the main things that could cause it, like parasitic mites. Uh, we're taking skin swabs um, to culture for fungal and bacteria growth. Also taking fur samples to culture and trying to see if we notice anything that could be causing it. It's an investigation into how big of a problem it is and also um, it sets a baseline for, for future studies. In the summer, we can't go in and count the bats. If you go in to a gray bat cave uh, in the summer and there are a lot of pups on the wall, sometimes they can fall off the wall. And if they're unable to fly, the mothers may be unable to put them back on the wall so they'll just die. So we, we don't go into summer in gray bat caves for that reason. The main thing is, is I want a, a cold background. So I want to get the, the cold rocks and then the hot bats will contrast flying over the rocks. I am. Uh, taking a thermal video of the bats as they emerge. And there's a new software package that's been in development for a couple of years that we're gonna start trying out that'll basically allow us to count the number of bats coming out of the cave. This is a gray bat. It is a male. Well, there's so many things we don't know about bats. The Nature Conservancy, along with TWRA, they're doing a MODIS project where they're putting radio transmitters on bats. MODIS is just a, a way of getting additional information about these bats when they're flying. And that's our biggest question mark, is what types of habitat are these bats using when they're migrating, when they're foraging? Um, and we need to sort of understand that so we can better conserve those landscapes moving forward. For an endangered species that has, is recovering and, and doing better, um, and hopefully we're moving them towards being removed from the endangered species list someday, we really need that information of the shoulder seasons. We need that full life cycle information so we can do the conservation that we need to do to get them downgraded or removed from the endangered species list. Hey, when the grandkids come to visit, do they plant themselves in front of the TV all day? That's no way to spend the summer. One of the best ways is to get them outdoors and take them fishing on one of Tennessee's beautiful lakes or rivers. There you go. It'll open up a whole new world of conversation and wonder and make memories to last a lifetime. To learn more about purchasing your fishing license, visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com. That's GoOutdoorsTennessee.com. Hello everybody and welcome to Drop the Tailgate. I'm Matt Cameron and I'm with my good buddy David Phillips and a couple young guys and today we're going to squirrel hunting in Bulls Gap, Tennessee. Hello David, welcome back. Thank you old buddy. I'm glad to be here with you. And what's your name young man? Tucker. This is Tucker. Elijah. And Elijah. And we're going to take them out here and see if they can get them a squirrel today. And uh, we had a lot of requests of what kind of 22 we was using. That's a Magnum Research 22 carbon fiber. And I had questions on what ammo. I'm shooting the CCI tactical in this 22. It's what it likes to shoot. Every gun shoots a different bullet, but that's the bullet we're using and the gun we're using. Well, we're and missing one person today, and that's Glenda. She's had some health issues. So we, we did a video a couple years ago. Yeah. And enjoyed having her. We're hoping the best for her. 
We do. We were, she, she really did. She really encouraged me. This is hard because it's what we do together. But she really encouraged me to bring these kids out and keep this going on. So uh, this is for her and for the kids. And luckily, Bitsy will do good. We can get them a squirrel today and make new friends that will last a lifetime. My dad always said, make a, make a friend with a kid. You got a friend for life. Facts. We do have Itsy Bitsy back. Yeah, but Itsy Bitsy is back in here ready to go. Mm -hmm. Boys ready? Boys ready? Yes, yes, Let's yes, get yes. it on. Does Bitsy find these squirrels uh, with her nose first or with her eyes first? She is uh, six, so she does with both. Most time when dogs start out, they start out with their eyes and then they get the squirrel people will tell you they get their nose. Most time when they're three, their nose comes to them. A lot of people don't like that because a dog will have too much nose and the squirrel might have been there and might be there and you might have to look for it but they call it having too much nose because they tree too quick and they're okay. certain. Whatever squirrel hunter is after that's got a dog is a dog that 90% of the time when they tree, they see the squirrel. Right. Cause I've had one that had way too much nose. She tree 25 times and you might see three to four squirrels. What kind of bark was that? That's a... 172 yards. Let me tell you how bad I know this place. That's a big, long, hick, scaly bark hickory, I'm thinking. <laughs> and there's holes in the top of it, but a lot of times they'll set above the holes. <laughs> <laughs> One way to find out. Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. Good shot. Right Oh, you oh, got, got him again. You got him. There he goes. He'll there he goes. Out. Here come out. Here he comes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Make sure you get the right angle on that. Get him out. Of Look at him. Oh, Big old boy squirrel. David, here we're out in the middle of the day now and uh, started off a little bit slow, but we, we kind of made up for lost time there about an hour ago. What what changed right there and kind of got more squirrels moving, or did we just have to come across? To be honest with you, they was, uh, uh, I think I was trying to come out, maybe start a late, another late rut. It's just that's just how it is. You come into a patch of woods and you don't find nothing, then all of a sudden, like a light switch, bam, they're out. Sure turned on there, even uh, lucked into a real pretty fox squirrel that a, a life has shot there, and that really made the hunt right there. And you see, you get a lot of fox squirrels out of these woods. There's, uh, there's uh, several here. I don't hardly ever take one, which I, I don't hardly ever take squirrels at all unless I've got kids with me, but there is, and uh, seems like these flat woods used to when I was a kid, you had to go to the mountain to find a fox squirrel, and now. It's in this low valleys you find a, you find a lot of fox squirrels in these low ground now. The element of having a dog with you while doing this is a game changer. I mean, we probably all squirrel hunted at some point, just walk around, look for them, sit at the base of a hickory tree, hope you see one. This is by far a, a better experience to get to hunt over a dog. Now, how many squirrels? We sound like a herd of bull elephants going through these dry leaves. How many squirrels do you think we would have seen today if we was all walking, talking together? The dog gets on out yonder and trees you a squirrel while you're back here having fun and talking. I've heard you guys talk about everything today and st and look at uh, buckeyes and different trees and stuff and talking about why she was out there hunting a squirrel. You can't do that when you're uh, regular squirrel hunt because you know you you slip up, sit down, be as quiet as you can to see them. But she'll get out there and find them for you. We're not the ones hunting, she is. Yeah. That's fun. But it's still fun. 
Yeah. I've been asked that same question. No. Well, which way we're going? I ain't going no which way. She's got the eyes and nose. I'm just gonna let her show me where to go. <laughs> That's about to help out and having you landed, but uh, but having that dog and just get to hunt with you guys with her is just uh, it's been a real blessing. We're very grateful. I appreciate that. And I this meant more to me than you all will ever know. Um, I'd truly love to have a kid every weekend to take out in the woods and take somewhere. Well, the best part of the day wasn't killing a squirrel, but the camaraderie and the social aspect of small game hunting to me is just, it's invaluable. And if, yeah. if you've never participated in this, you're missing out because, you know, a lot of, and, and tell me if you agree with this or not, but I think there's a lot of kids get turned off on hunting in general because their mom or dad took them deer hunting maybe first time when they're five or six and it's cold and they make them sit still, be quiet, worried about wind direction, and they don't enjoy that experience. This right here is the complete opposite. Uh, I'm honestly 100% with you. The kids had fun. I mean, uh, as I told earlier about the dogs, if you was training a dog, you'd rather have older kids than you would then. Uh, Tucker there, he was getting tired and everything. And then when the dog treed, he was going to get to shoot a squirrel. Man, that was a life comeback in him. And uh, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it'd be a super hard trip, first one without Glenda, but these kids are smiling and laughing and I seen the smile on her face and they got it, man. It made it super easy. And I just hope when I'm gone, there'll be somebody else to take these kids because all of us, I guess our age, we had somebody in our family or someone that spent the time and took the time to let us go hunting. I, I hunted by myself most of my life, but the situations was different and, you know, 58 years ago, things were different than it was now. Uh, parents and the neighbors, if I went over on my neighbor a hunting or whatever, you know, they would check on me or, and stuff. The things is different now. And people, I thank God for people that um, will let you go hunt and let me take these kids hunt. Quick as they find out I'm doing it for a kid, they're all in. I mean, I called two or three friends of mine Asked them about taking these kids a hunting. Oh, yeah, if it's for the kids, you make sure and take them. I thank God for the opportunity to do it. And I hope, I hope one of us said something today that stuck in these little kids' minds to make sure that they know the Lord Jesus Christ before they die. Amen to that. And this creation God's given us is bountiful and beautiful, and we're just grateful to get to experience it. Well, David, we're winding down, but uh, look forward to going with you again next year. I enjoyed it. Thank you, sir. Uh, hope you all enjoyed this episode of Drop the Tailgate. Join us next time for some more fun in the Tennessee great outdoors. Hello, folks. Jerry Reed here with a little message to you about safe boating. You know, when you're hot, you're hot. But just in case things get a little too hot, then I always carry aboard my boat this Coast Guard approved fire extinguisher. Because folks, I got to tell you, accidents don't just happen. They're usually the product of somebody's careless thinking. So you do you and me a favor, and you be a safe boater this year, because I'm going to do a lot of fishing. I support the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Center Agency and because I love wildlife, the birds, the bees, well, all of it. And here is my license to prove it. It says, Mrs. Henry Cannon, that's many pearl to you. It also says that I have helped to pay for the protection of our wildlife resources and the environment that we share with all wildlife. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Tennessee Outdoor Journal. We'll see you next time. Tennessee Outdoor Journal is produced by your Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Tell me who will carry on this work that we've begun. Care enough to be the keeper of the dream this legacy